Uh, hello there. My name is Robin, a PhD candidate at Nongo University. And now I'm going to introduce our work called VICE, which is about improving dense representation learning by using super pixels and uh, contrasting cluster assignment. And these days it's uh, well known that uh, self-supervised methods tend to outperform or at least uh, equal the performance of uh, plain supervised models on the uh, classification task. Though these methods are kind of inefficient for learning dense representations as to reduce the entire image into like a 7-7 feature map uh, that discards uh, precise spatial information about what's in the image. And it also becomes prohibitively expensive to optimize over uh, millions of uh, vectors. So to solve these problems, we introduce uh, super pixels as a means to decompose images into a small set of visually coherent regions. And uh, this allows us to reduce the computational complexity by an order of thousand that uh, improves the efficiency of contrasting methods, uh, which in turn allows us to learn semantics from high res resolution images, uh, which in itself is shown to be beneficial. So our method is formulated around uh, viewing the, the generation of natural images as a stochastic generated process uh, that uh, basically takes a set of visual concepts that are represented in a dense uh, representation map Z that then generates different pixel appearances of the, the content, so to say. And uh, the main point is that we assume that a single latent Z tensor uh, maps to several different images, or basically the same visual content exists in uh, images that have different pixel appearances. So then our method is, is uh, grounded in uh, learning the inverse function that goes from uh, latent concepts to uh, the actual pixel image as well as learning you know, the set of visual concepts themselves. And uh, this is part of the general problem of uh, vision as inverse graphics. And the, the reason this is possible is that the, there are two learning signals. Uh, so one is, is that uh, the same content is known to be represented by different pixel appearances by using data augmentation. And it's also possible to elucidate semantic meaning from uh, uh, co-occurrence co and contextual patterns uh, similar to how word, word embeddings are learned. And uh, we effectivize the process of learning these embeddings by decomposing the image into regional uh, coherent regions by superpixelization, and in particular use uh, the uh, slick method. And we also show that uh, superpixels are better than, than using uniform grids because they preserve details such as thin and small patches by distinct regions. And it also requires uh, sub substantially fewer elements on average when you have the same base element size. And uh, we use the following augmentations to generate different views of the same content. The first is uh, photometric invariance augmentations, like uh, applying a random color distortion and uh, blurring that allows us to learn appearance invariant representations. And then there are uh, geometric invariance augmentations that are derived from uh, taking a taking a randomly sized crop and then resize that, you know, back to a common view size. So you get the resolution invariant representation. And uh, then there is this final augmentation about contextual invariance, which is about uh, masking a random number of uh, super pixel regions with noise and uh, by doing so, uh, learning more robust representations. And the learning algorithm itself starts by having a set of training images, which then are super pixelized into I-mutual regions that exist in all different views. And then all the views themselves are generated uh, 
uh, with different uh, appearance and geometric invariance and uh, contextual augmentations. And all of these views are then transformed into embedding maps by, by the, the model. And these uh, embeddings are then organized into region-wise uh, trees that allows for easy access. And then for each region, we uh, compute the mean vector to represent the, the region, you know, among all the, the vectors that, are, that belong to the region. And then we score each embedding vector for each region in terms of the closeness to, to each of these uh, predefined, clo uh, predefined concept vectors. So we get like compatibility score. And then the objective uh, tries to optimize the distribution of, of all concepts and uh, make the match you know, between the different views. And we implemented the work using the following frameworks, uh, VISL for the optimization code itself, and then MM segmentation for, experimentation, uh, for evaluation. And we evaluated the work on Coco and Cityscapes. And uh, to evaluate representation quality, we did uh, unsupervised semantic segmentation experiments as well as linear model experiments. And we also compared the performance of using high and low resolution images. And uh, we have a we have a set hyperparameters, which which includes these embedding dimensions and the number of concepts in all experiments. And uh, to summarize the results, uh, when comparing with baselines, you know, apples to apples comparison, uh, we find that, you know, both the unsupervised semantic segmentation and linear model results are better. And uh, we believe the main difference is that online clustering is, is better or more stable than uh, offline clustering as used in, pri in the baseline. And for... Uh, for the high and low resolution image results, uh, we find that the, in general, the unsupervised semantic segmentation results are always better for high resolution images. And uh, at least uh, and for linear model results, they are at least better for generic images. Uh, so we conclude that learning from high resolution images tend to lead to better results, in particular, uh, better distinction of uh, small details such as pedestrians and poles. And we also did some ablation studies where we show that uh, we show how you know image the image decomposition improved performance and uh, significantly reduced computation time, and also that super pixels are better than grids in terms of like, improving performance and also reducing the computation time for high resolution images. And we also found out that uh, a bigger decoder is not necessarily better, and uh, the choice of recorder should be resolution dependent, where the smaller FPN decoder works better for low resolution, and the state of the art T plus version 3 plus decoder is best for high resolution images. And we also did a domain generalization experiment where we find that uh, training the model on a large diverse generic image domain like Coco is better than uh, training it on a narrow specialized domain data set like Cityscapes also when we evaluate on the narrow domain. Uh, so this results also supports the general conclusion that uh, general vision models can learn more useful embeddings. And uh, here are just a few examples of uh, how our model discovers distinct semantic entities without any human supervision, and also show that our model improves the prior state of the art for unsupervised semantic segmentation by better fitting content as well as uh, discovering smaller uh, details or semantics such as pedestrians. And to conclude, uh, so we presented a new state-of-the-art self-supervised, unsupervised semantic segmentation method called VICE that uh, learns to generate dense semantic embeddings, embedding maps for uh, high-resolution natural images. And uh, we do so by decomposing images using superpixelization, 
uh, to significantly improve the effectiveness of classification-based self-supervised methods. And we also show that the uh, superpixels outperform conventional grid map decompositions. And uh, we hope that our results will further increase interest to incorporate these kinds of non-uniform image decomposition techniques to improve other kinds of uh, self-supervised computer vision methods, including transformers-based ones. So that's all for the presentation. I hope you found it interesting and uh, I'll be very happy to get in touch if you have any questions. Thanks. <laughs>